Serena Brown, Serena Brown. If uh, I do see a Serena, if you will unmute, if that's you, Serena Brown, unmute and announce your uh, appearance. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Thank you. So I see a handful of phone numbers. Devonte Johnson, if you're on the phone, press star six, unmute, announce your appearance. Otherwise, unmute your device and announce your appearance. Devonte Johnson. All right. No answer. <clears throat> All right, uh, Ms. Savage, good morning. Good morning. All right, are you ready on the Brown matter? Your client, uh, Serena Brown, is present. Yes, she is here. She's ready. Uh, in the interest of J.B. for an adversary hearing, uh, everyone has announced uh, ready. Ms. Uh, Adams, uh, last time we met on this case, I believe the announcement was that it was contested. Um, and so any updated announcements in that regard? I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Judge? Sure. Last time we were here, uh, Ms. Savage announced that the hearing uh, was contested, and I was wondering if there was any change in that regard. Uh, you'd have to ask Ms. Savage. Ms. Savage, is this agreed or contested? It's contested. All right. Uh, so with that, um, is there any request for opening statements from anyone? No, Your Honor. My understanding, we're already into this hearing correct like that, that we already had a witness that is correct okay and were we finished with that witness let me let me see let's see had we had we heard from ms mays um your honor had already spoken that. with miss alexander with the worker and I believe I see him. Yes, Judge, based on my notes, we'd already mm -hmm. gone through the initial investigations worker and even briefly called um, Ms. Franklin, the conservatorship worker. All right. So, um, Ms. Alexander, good morning. Uh, let me remind you that you are still under oath. Um, are there any further questions for Ms. Alexander? I'll start with Ms. Adams. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Alexander, did you speak to um, anyone since the last hearing regarding um, a, a possible placement for this child? Um, yes, I spoke to Melissa Spradley. Um, and I actually. And who, and, and who is Melissa Spradley in this case? She's the aunt of All Serena right. Brown. Um, and I asked her, uh, will she be willing to take the child? And she said, at this, this time, she cannot. She can help her, but she cannot take sole responsibility for the child due to and her it, own um, medical, um, her own health conditions and um, appointments. And um, is Miss is Serena Brown living with Melissa Spradley at this time? Yes, from when I last heard, yes. All right. D did you talk to Serena Brown any between this last, the last hearing and now? Talk to her, no. All right, well, what did you do with her? Um, I sent her a text to, to get on the call last week. That was it. Okay. To give her the information for this hearing. Yes, because, yeah, I just want her to be on the call. And who is <laughs> Chastity Murray? That is her cousin. That is Melissa Spradley's daughter. All right. And was that a, brought up as a potential placement? Um, she signed the papers for um to be a potential placement. And then um after I spoke to Melissa Spradley, um, oh, and when I did speak to Mrs. Melissa Spradley, I asked about her daughter and she said that um she um her daughter would no longer be able to do it because she's doing um home renovations and she doesn't have room. That's what okay. Melissa Spradley told me. And then after that I called Chastity and she didn't answer. All right. Um, has any other potential placements been off, been um, inquired about by the or given any any other any other things that we've been able to do to find a, a possible safe placement for this child. No, ma'am. Family wise, That's, no. Okay, and uh, past witness. All right, thank you, Miss Savage. Uh, <coughs> ma'am. Yes. In regard to this placement, you have no other placements other than what you have already testified to. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Okay. I'll pass the witness. 
All right. Thank you, Ms. Wheeler. No questions, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Adams. No further questions for this witness. All right. Thank you. Okay. Do we, um, Ms. Adams, you may call your next. I would like to call, I believe there's an Officer Haynes on the call. Okay. Well, then, um, I thought that I thought that that was off. I miss I miss saw the person that was on the phone. Um, I would like to recall the conservatorship worker. Okay, is that Ms. Uh, Franklin? Sure. Okay, thank you, Ms. Adams. You may proceed. Yes. How is the child? She's doing well. And she's where are they currently placed? She's currently placed in a medical needy foster home. Are all of her needs being met? Yes, they are. Why is she, did you say a, a needy? A medical, correct. A, I mean, they can take care of her medical needs in that home. Okay. And is is that because her medical needs are severe enough to, to need more than basic care? That's correct. Okay. Um, has she been to the doctor since the last hearing? She's actually been to three different doctor's appointments and two med had two medical tests completed. And is she doing better than when she came into care? Absolutely. Right. Are you, is it your belief that it would be in the best interest of this child if she remain, if she is, if the department is granted temporary managing conservatorship? Yes. Why? Because of her medical needs, because of all the doctor's appointments that she has to have and because of her future medical needs. All right. What about, have you met with Miss Serena Brown? No, I have not. All right. Um, will you be meeting with her soon? As soon as the case is officially assigned over to CVS, yes. All right. Pass witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Savage. So you have no testimony of any conversations you've had with Ms. Brown? No, not at this time. Okay. I pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pardue Wheeler. Yes, Judge, just a few. Um, <clears throat> Ma'am, you mentioned that it's not only in this child's best interest because of her medical needs now, but in the future. Can you please describe to the court what her medical needs are right now? Right now, she's currently undergoing tests and an evaluation to possibly just have a G-tube and to have surgery. So upon her release, that's been what the main medical concern is now. And just... Because it's been a couple of weeks since we've been here, can you um, just remind us why these are necessary for this child? In order for her to actually be able to eat and gain weight, um, she was brought into care because of failure to thrive and unable to eat. So <laughs> as of right now, she's no longer malnourished because of this. And what are her problems with eating? What are the, what requires the surgery? She actually has a NG tube and then will require a G tube. Possibly she's unable to eat by mouth due to a cleft palate. And the surgery that you're referencing that she'll need here in the future, is that to, to um, create the place for the G tube or also to cure the cleft palate? Both. And what's the timeline for those surgeries? We have not received a actual timeline. She just had her first initial evaluation last week. Okay. And at this time, does the department believe that um, the mother in this case is capable on her own of meeting the medical needs of this child? No, ma'am, not at this time. Okay. Okay. Um, No further questions, Judge. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Adams. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Savage? No. All right. Thank you. Ms. Adams, you may call your next, if any. The, the department calls Monica Croft. All right. Thank you. Right. You may proceed. Ms. Croft, do you have a volunteer assigned to this case yet? Um, I do, but she has not seen the child and she is not able to be here today. Have you seen the child? I, I have, yes, ma'am, when she was in the hospital. All right. Um, and are you up to date on how the child is currently doing in her placement? Yes, ma'am. I have spoken with placement about um, 
doctor visits and how the child is doing. Do you believe that the mother would be able to keep up with all of these medical visits and such um, that are being accomplished by this medical needy foster home? At this time, um, I, I don't feel that that would be possible. Have you spoken to any of these proposed placements? I have spoken with Ms. Bradley, and I have also had a short conversation with mom. All right. I tried to reach out to the cousin, Miss Murray, through text and phone calls, but she would never return a text or a phone call. Tell me about your conversation with mom. I called mom and asked how she was doing. It was after court and she said that she was doing okay. Um, I asked her if she was familiar with CASA. She was not. So I explained a little bit about CASA. And we would also be a support system for mom and be here when we could be. Um, I had asked if she wanted her cousin, Miss Murray, to be a placement. And at that time, she had said yes. Um, I asked her how she was doing since she had um, come out of the hospital. And she said that she was doing good, that she was taking her medication. And that was about our conversation. Did she tell you what she was in the hospital for? She did not, but I already knew why she was there, ma'am. All right. And did y'all talk about the medication that she was on? I did not because I had not talked to Ms. Savage about that yet. All right. Pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Savage. I don't have any more questions. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pardue Wheeler. Yes, Judge, just briefly. Ma'am, you said you've spoken to um, the aunt in this case, Ms. Spradley? Yes. And that is the aunt with whom it was attempted to initiate a safety plan prior to this formal removal. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And just to refresh everybody's memory, do you know who all lives in that home with Miss Spradley and the mother? Uh, there's Miss Spradley, the mother, Miss Spradley's husband, and I do believe a sibling of um it's either uh Miss Spradley's sibling or it's mom's sibling. Um a little confused on that right now. Okay. Um, but is it is it clear that Miss Bradley is taking care of two grown adults who are um, doing their best to navigate some pretty severe mental health diagnoses? Yes, she is. Okay. Um, and and that that safety plan fell through initially. Is that correct? It did. Yes, ma'am. And so is it in, is it your testimony to the court today that it would be in this child's best interest to remain in this uh, medically trained foster placement? Currently, I do feel, yes, ma'am. Okay. And is it in the child's best interest to be in the care of the department during this time? Casa cannot make that recommendation at an adversary hearing. Okay. Well, I thought I'd, it's worth asking. Um, no further questions, Judge. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Adams. No further questions for this witness. Okay, thank you. You may call your next, if any. I'd like to call Melissa Spradley. I believe she's on the phone. She's on the call. Oh, all right, Miss uh, Miss Spradley, if you can, okay. you're on the phone, so you're not able to connect to video. Is that correct? Um, I said the doctor appointment. Okay. All right. So thank you, Ms. Adams. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Spradley, are you and Serena Brown currently living in the same home? All right. Are you aware of what Ms. Brown is diagnosed with? Um, no, I'm not. Um, they told me I did do it, but I don't know that it was schizophrenic or bipolar also. Okay. Could you, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? We were hearing you on two different phones. I'm sorry. Um, I had um, I was I told her um, I was told the other day that the uh, what the doctor told me that it was IDD, but um, I was told by someone else that it was bipolar and schizophrenic also. Okay. Um, that she had paperwork, but she never gave me any paperwork. All right. Do you know she's not on any medications? Um, they told me she was on a long um, acting injection. Say that again. I'm sorry. I couldn't make that out. A long acting injection. Oh, long acting injections? Yes, ma'am. Do you know the name of the medication? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay. Where do you live, ma'am? I mean, just what city? Uh, Baytown. 
All right. Um, and my understanding is that Miss Brown and the the child were uh, homeless on the streets of Louisiana. Is that your understanding as well? No, they were living with um, my sister's fiance at the time of her death. Okay. Is that before she passed away? Yes, ma'am. All right. And then um, how did they end up with you? Um, he kept calling because they were doing, you know, stuff and um, she was leaving the baby in the house with the other sister and leaving the house and going to other places. So um, they were tearing up the house and different stuff. So he called me to see if I can assist them in getting them. All right. Um, is is Miss Brown going to continue to live with you? Um, yes, ma'am. For for how long? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, long as you know everything is okay and they're not you know doing what they were doing before when they first got here. You know, I'm willing to help them, like I told them. You know, but I can't allow y'all to you know tear up my things and what we work so hard to do. You know, so as long as they're willing to take their medicine and you know go to their appointments and everything, I'm willing to help them. Do you believe that Miss Brown needs assistance? Could 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 Miss Brown take care of this child by herself? Um, I I think if she was shown the correct way, she could because um, after my sister passed away, she was you know taking care of her until you know all we got them. But um, I don't know. She wasn't going to have no appointments or anything. The baby hadn't been to the doctor since we were born. Was your the sister the so primary? I don't, I don't know. Was your sister the primary caregiver of the child before she passed away? Oh, no. Actually, Serena was. All right. Have you been able to see the, um, have you been able to see the, when's the last time that you saw the child? Um, when she was in the home. In your home? In December, I think it was. Yes, ma'am. And how long was she there? Um, uh, probably a few weeks. Uh, and did you notice that she was malnourished? Well, when I first initially went to pick them up, I knew that she was. Well, I thought my sister also when she found the pictures. I told her she was tiny. And um, when I went to pick them up, I heard how she was breathing. And so I picked them up. And then on the way home, I heard, you know, her coughing and everything. So I brought them straight to the emergency room when we got to Texas. I know okay. we have better doctors here, so. Okay. And then... And then how long was she in the doctor? At, how long was she at the doctor's at that time? Um, they kept them in the hospital for a week, I think it was. All right. And then she came back to your home? Yes, ma'am. All right. For how long? Um, probably a few days. All right. Pass witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Savage. I don't have any questions. Okay. Hey, thank you, Ms. Pardue Wheeler. No questions, Judge. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, may this witness be excused? All right. Ms. Bradley, thank you for your, your time and your assistance in this matter. You are excused to go about your day and uh, make your appointment. So thank you very thank much. You. All right. You are excused. Thank you. All right. Any any other witnesses, Ms. Adams? You may No, call. Your Honor. The department rests. All right. Thank you, Ms. Savage. You may call your first, if any. I call uh, <laughs> Serena Brown. Is she in the office with you, Ms. Savage? Yes, she's right here. All right, well, let, let's see if that causes any feedback. Um, Ms. Brown, if you will raise your right hand, please, to be sworn. All right, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, Nothing but the truth, so help you God, yes? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, Miss Savage, you may proceed. Would you state your name, please? Serena Brown. And Ms. Brown, if I can get you to speak up, please, ma'am. Serena Brown. Thank you. Okay, again, Ms. Savage, is Ms. Brown in your office? I thought this was the first one. Evidently, it's not. I'm sorry? She's not in my office, no. 
Okay, all right, I'm, I'm getting some background noise, so you may proceed. Ms. Brown, you are Ms. Brown, is that correct? Yes. And has uh, the mother of this child, JB, lived with you? Yes. She has. Is she still living with you? And Ms. Savage, I, I believe uh, this is this is the mother, Ms. Brown, your client. Ms. Brown, Ms. Brown, uh, Serena Brown, you're the mother of the child. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is there any way that you can uh, move to a place where it is uh, more quiet than, than where you are right now? I, I don't know your physical situation. And so, Ms. Savage, this uh, is your client, the mother whom um, you were appointed under 161.003. Yes. All right. So I believe, Ms. Brown, are you, are you, um, are you situated there? Yes. Okay. All right. Keep your voice up, please, ma'am. And thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Savage, you may continue. Ms. Brown, uh, facility hospital right now. What? Excuse me. Are you in a facility hospital? Uh, no, not right now. You're not? Mm -mm. Okay, where? Uh, well, where are you right now? Oh, I'm in a, uh, a doctor's office. You're in a doctor's office? Yes. Okay. And how long have you been there at that doctor's office? Oh, uh, it's not for me. I'm here with somebody. Oh, okay. And where is the doctor's office? Uh, Baytown. Baytown, okay. Did you stay there last night? Um, no. Okay. What, um, where do you live, Miss Brown? Uh, in Baytown. And who do you live with? Uh, 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 Melissa. Is that Melissa Spradley, Ms. Brown? Yes. All right. Next question. And are you there for a treatment? No. You're not? You're just there with her? Yes. Okay. And when's the last time you've seen your daughter? Uh, December 30th. Now, where did you see your daughter? At the house. And at what house? Melissa Spratley's house. And was that in Chambers County? Yes. Okay. And when you leave where you are now, where are you going? I have, uh, I don't know right now. You don't know? Oh, leave the doctor's office? Or? Yes, when you leave there, where are you going? Uh, back to the house. I don't know. Okay. 
And what county will that be in? In Baytown. And where did you get the uh, things that you have on your hair? Oh, my um, Melissa paid for it. She did. Mm -hmm. Do you know what's wrong with your little girl? Yes. What is it? She ha oh, she has a cleft palate. And where is she now? Do you know? No. And where would you want her treated? Uh, I don't know. So as of now, you don't know where you'd want to treat it? No. Was there anything else you want to tell the judge? No. All right, Ms. Savage, did you pass the witness? I hadn't yet, but I'm fixing to. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass it. All right, thank you, Ms. Purdue Wheeler. Yes, Judge, just, just a few things. Serena, my name's Courtney Wheeler, and I'm the lawyer assigned to actually represent your kiddo in this case. So I don't I represent anybody else, just your daughter. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what kind of doctor's visits you guys had with her after she was born before you got to Texas? Well, uh, I had uh, her pediatrician appointment, and I went to that. Was there just one or more than one? Oh, uh, that was just... It was more than one, but uh, I didn't have a ride because I have to uh, kind of have to rely on uh, Medicaid transport, and they're not too good. Okay. Um, and then when you got to Texas and they took you guys to, uh, Miss Melissa took you guys to the hospital, is that when you found out that your your baby had these problems eating? Uh, no, I knew before, but the, uh, the hospital up there, they gave me... Um, a, a special bottle to feed her out of. And was she actually able to consume, I guess, milk and formula through that bottle? Or did she have a hard time? Uh, yeah, she would take a while, but she would drink it. Okay. Um, do you understand kind of what the doctors have been saying since you guys got to Texas, how important it is for her to have these special medical devices so that she can eat and catch up on her weight? Yes. Do you, do you want your baby to get that medical treatment? Yes. Okay. Um, now, at the time, you live, right now you live with um, Melissa, and is it your sister or another cousin? No, that was my mom's sister. Your mom's sister, okay. And is, your, is that other sister the one that has schizophrenia? No, uh, no, the one that died, that was her sister. Okay, no, I'm talking about in the house with you and Melissa right now. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that has schizophrenia. Okay, and can that sometimes be really difficult? Sometimes. Okay. Um, do you do you remember the day that um, the ambulance had to come to help you guys with your daughter's NG tube? Yes. Um, and w did you guys try to get her NG tube back in into her before the ambulance came? Yeah, I tried to put it back, but she pulled it out again. Okay. Um, 
And are, are you glad that finally the ambulance came and was able to get your baby to the hospital where they could get her back on, on her food? Yes. The reason why I'm asking this, Serena, is because I'm, I'm trying to figure out if you think it's, it's best for this baby to stay in a, in a home with people who are, are really well trained to make sure that those tubes stay where they're supposed to be. Um, and I'm just curious, do you think that that's what's best for your baby? And if you don't know, you're totally welcome to say, I don't know. You don't have to say uh, yes. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, now, do you understand that if your baby stays in CPS care, that they will make sure she gets all of the, the medical needs met and her surgeries? If that's what's coming up next to her, do you understand that's what's going to happen? Yes. Okay. And if the baby stays in CPS care, do you understand that they're going to ask you to do some work and some services and take classes? Yes. Um, and if that happens, are you willing, if the judge makes that order today that the baby stays where she is, are you willing mm -hmm. to do those services so that you can be ready to give this baby the care she needs? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all the questions I have for this witness, Judge. All right. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Ms. Brown, do you want CPS to have um, conservatorship and possession of your baby for a little while? Yes. Okay. Pass the witness. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Savage. I don't have any more questions. I'm just... All right. Thank you. You may call your next, if any. I don't have any other. All right, do you rest? Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Uh, Purdue Wheeler, you may call your first, if any. I don't have any witnesses, Judge. Okay. All right, and do you rest? Yes, Judge. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, at this time, the court will um, entertain uh, Ms. Croft, I see your hand up. Your Honor, I do apologize. Um, Casa would like to advocate for mom to have a guardian ad litem, please. I, I truly feel that mom would benefit from that. All right. Any any objections to the court uh, considering that, Ms. Adams, Ms. Savage, no, Ms. Purdue Wheeler? No. no objections at all. How are you? How are you? All right, Ms. Croft, thank you. And uh, based on the recommendation and the agreement, um, uh, the court will uh, appoint a guardian ad litem uh, to the mother. And while I'm in the process of doing that and everyone is here, um, let me ask, and I don't know if Ms. Spradley is still here, um, I did excuse her, so she may not be. But is anyone aware, mom or anyone, anyone aware of any Alaskan or Native American um, membership, membership eligibility, or even heritage? Yes, I think it's Cherokee. I'm sorry. This is Miss Braylon. Uh, who is this again? Miss Braylon. Melissa Braylon. Okay, Miss Spradley. And you said perhaps Cherokee? Yes, correct. Okay, and can you be a, a little more specific? Um, I'm not sure. I will have to call my aunt and ask her, but I know at one time, this was years ago, they had called me to go sign paperwork because they were putting a casino or something on our land, and we were supposed to be getting payment for it, but when they called me, it was like too late or something. The time had passed or whatever, but I think it said charity. I have to call my aunt because it's on my uh paternal side, so I have to call my aunt to make sure. All right, and and will you do that and forward that information to CPS and um, Ms. Brown's attorney? Yes, sir. Uh, and and even Casa. Yes, sir. That would be Ms. Croft. Okay. And um, Ms. Iverson? 
Yes, sir. Um, have have you been listening in by chance to to the Brown hearing? To a degree, Your Honor, I am I'm aware of the general um, scenario. I'm sorry, Ms. Iverson, could you repeat that? I said uh, to a degree, I've been li listening in. Um, I'm aware of the scenario. Okay. All right. I think scenario is what I missed. Okay. Um, would you be amenable uh, to appointment um, as the mother's guardian ad litem, Serena Brown? Absolutely, Your Honor. All right. So the court would hereby, does hereby appoint uh, Ellis Iverson as the mother Serena Brown's uh, guardian ad litem uh, going forward. All right, so in terms of uh, any brief uh, closing arguments, um, Ms. Adams? Your Honor, I believe that this um, child would be in danger if um, the department was not granted temporary managing a servitor in addition to the mother's agreement that that's in the best interest of the child. Um, we're asking for a temporary managing a servitorship to this child at this time. All right, thank you, um, Ms. Savage. I have no objection to the appointment at Lada. All right, any closing uh, arguments? No. All right, thank you, Ms. Purdue Wheeler. Yes, Judge, I would just agree with the department in that I, I think that the evidence has been laid that this child would be in danger should the child be returned home to the family at this time to, I mean, just with the medical needs of, of the child um, and the mom's agreement that this is potentially in the best interest of the child. And I would ask that uh, TMC be granted to the department. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anything Can further? Ms. Adams? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. This is Can I say something? All right. At this time, uh, the court uh, does find that a reasonable reasonable person of ordinary prudence uh, could find, and the court hereby does find that there was a danger to the physical health and safety of the child caused um, by the mother's act uh, and or failure to act, um, and that it would be contrary to the child's welfare and well-being to be returned to the mother uh, today. Uh, the court also finds that there was an urgent need for protection, uh, which required and rose to the level of uh, the immediate removal, notwithstanding the department's having the department having made reasonable efforts to prevent or alleviate the need for removal. Uh, moreover, that uh, reasonable efforts were made. Um, the court so finds to enable uh, the child's return to the home, but there there is the court finds a substantial risk of continuing danger were the child to be returned uh, home. Uh, today. The department is named as the uh, temporary sole managing uh, conservator of the child, JB, the subject of the suit. Um, the mother is named a temporary possessory uh, conservator. The court, um, let me ask about the status hearing. It's uh, projected to be at our next regular docket, which is February the 5th. So, uh, can that be met given the family group conference and its schedule? Ms. Franklin, do you know? Your Honor, this is Salika. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So it was scheduled for tomorrow, but I wanted to wait for this hearing to see if mom was going to get a guardian ad litem. Um, so I think we have until the 14th to get it scheduled. So it will be in the next couple weeks. Well, um, I can make tomorrow work if that's the issue. Yeah, the thing is, I don't, I don't have a, a docket between. Well, we have one on February the fifth, and then I don't think I have one until uh, March the fourth. We can get um, it done before the fifth, as long as is, all the attorneys are on board. Okay. Well, it sounds like um, if you all are not, please let us know at this point. Otherwise, I'm going to leave the status hearing uh, on the 5th. Let me tell you my availability. Um, 
It would have right. to be this let me, week. Let me make sure, Ms. Monaghan, just, just a moment. Let me make sure the attorneys are uh, listening up and taking this down. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, I'm available tomorrow morning. I'm available Wednesday afternoon. I'm available anytime after 1030 on the 1st and Friday is Liberty Court. All right. So, um, Ms. Brown, between now and the 5th of February, uh, the department will get to with you and um, everyone you see on the screen uh, who has taken part in this hearing um, and anyone whom you want to invi invite and hold a family group conference. From that conference will come a service plan, um, a list of services and resources uh, to help you um, get to a point where you're able to provide a safe environment for your child, if at all. Um, that service plan is going to become an order of the court in all likelihood on uh, February the 5th. Um, and as uh, an order of the court, uh, if you don't comply with, abide by, and demonstrate uh, what you have learned from that service plan, addressed all of the concerns that the department has, um, and demonstrate that you can provide a safe environment for your child. Your parental rights um, may be uh, terminated or uh, further restricted uh, should the department seek to do that. So um, in conference with the department, your attorney, your guardian ad litem, um, you will be able to assist them in uh, providing the services that you need um, in order to provide a safe uh, environment for uh, JB. Your compliance on that service yes. plan will be evaluated um, by this court, really by everyone in the case, um, at every hearing um, in this case in, in the future. Our dismissal date is January the 6th of 2025. Again, our next hearing is for a status hearing, February the 5th at 9 a.m. That will be in person. Uh, the trial date is presently December the 4th, December the 4th, 9 a.m. That is in person, of course, as well. Okay, I will sign orders uh, that comport with my uh, ruling. Anything else from anyone else? Okay, thank you all very much. Please uh, take care. And um, Ms. Brown, um, you, you are not alone in this. Um, and so um, lean on everyone and, and um, let uh, the department assist you um, in being able to provide a safe environment in the future for JB. All right. So with that, uh, you all are excused. Thank you.